Hi, I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World, and this little monster is the newest pattern in the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club. So when I say current pattern, it is October 15th, 2020. So this guy will be exclusive to club members until November 15th, 2020, at which point a new pattern will be released in the clubhouse. And then sometime early in December, this guy will be available at shinyhappyworld.com uh, for anybody to purchase. So before we get into, um, into the details of how to make them, I like to give just a quick overview of my quilt as you go method because that's a little bit different than the way a lot of people do it. So in order to do that, I'm gonna flip this block over so you can see it from the back. So I do all of the work on the block with just the block and the batting. I don't put a backing on until I am all done. So you can see, if you look at the back, that the quilting, that's these orange wavy lines, go all over the block. It's not just on the outside of the applique, it's all the way through. And that's because I do the quilting on the block before I add the applique. For me, that is really fun and I enjoy doing it that way and it's really just kind of a doodle exercise fun, just kind of twirling the block around. Um, in the machine without having without having the whole bulk of the quilt all around it it makes it really easy to do fun designs in my quilting so after I get it quilted then I, I do the applique on top of the quilting and I do applique with fusible adhesive so we're going to get into the details on that but I do the applique on top of the quilting and then I outline around all of the applique. I just do straight stitch outlining. I don't like to satin stitch, so I don't do it. Um, and I found that this is really durable. I, this can be washed in the machine, washer and dryer, without any problems. So I do all of the applique and the outlining, and then I trim the block to size, sew all the blocks together, press those seams open, and that's when I put the backing on. So I put the backing on and then I'm only doing quilting through all three layers to secure the backing, just stitching in the ditch around the outside edges of all of the blocks. So when you're maneuvering the, the entire mass of the quilt through the machine, the easiest kind of quilting to do is just straight lines where you can just push it straight through. And so this is doing straight lines and they're 10 inches apart, so you don't have to do very many of them for a quilt. I can do a nap size quilt, uh, which is a great kind of couch size quilt, in about a half an hour, do all of the quilting on that. So that's about as long as I wanna have to wrestle the whole mass of a quilt through the machine, and that works out really, really well. So that is just a quick nutshell version of my quilt as you go method that I use. Now we're gonna get into the specific details of how to make this adorable monster. Okay, the first thing that you're gonna do is print or trace your pattern onto some paper-backed fusible adhesive. This is the brand I like, Heat and Bond, and I use the lightweight, that's what I use in all of my quilts. It can be washed and dried in the machine after it's been sewn down around the edges. And you can buy it by the yard at just about any fabric store, but I'm really lazy and I don't like to trace. So I get the printable sheets and then I can print the pattern directly onto the adhesive and I can skip that tedious tracing step. So oh, the pattern has already been reversed, so it's already a mirror image and it has been exploded. And when I say exploded, I mean all of the pieces that would normally overlap each other have been pulled apart. So they are all separate individual pieces on the um, all laid out. So after you get it printed or traced, you're gonna cut out the pieces roughly and fuse them to the back of your fabric. And when I say roughly, I mean don't cut it right on the lines, on these solid lines. Cut it a little bit outside the lines so you have a little bit of that white outline outside the lines. And then fuse it to the wrong side of your fabric. And when we come back, I'll explain why you do that rough cut first and we'll talk about cutting it out the clean cut. All right, once you have the pieces rough cut and fused to the wrong side of your fabric, the next step is to cut the pieces out now cleanly, and that is gonna be on the solid line. For now, ignore all of those dotted lines in there. Those are placement lines, and we'll talk about them in just a second. So, 
You cut it out now nice and smoothly on those solid lines. And the reason that you do this is when you fuse it before cutting that final cut, that means that the adhesive is going all the way to this edge of the paper. It's going past the line that you're going to cut on. So when we go back now and cut on that line, it means we are absolutely sure that the adhesive is going all the way to the cut edge of the fabric. Every single thread is covered and that means that it's going to hold up really well in the washer and the dryer. So here are our pieces all clean cut. So we've got two main ears, we've got two inner ears, we have the main body, we have a belly, a contrasting belly, and now we've got some smaller pieces. We've got a mouth and a nose and a couple of very tiny pupils for the eyes, he's got white eyes, and he has some a little tuft of hair that's going to go up at the top of his head, and that's three little little sticks there. So when we come back, I'll show you how we use all of those dotted lines. Okay, now we're going to take care of all of these dotted lines. All of the dotted lines in the pattern show you the placement of something. So it might be the placement of an applique piece showing you just where it's going to sit. It might be the placement of a piece showing you where it tucks behind another piece. Or it might be showing you where you're going to do a stitching line. So this uh, stroke down from his nose to his mouth is just going to be stitched directly on that line. So you need to mark the line. So I do those markings with a couple of different tools uh, and it depends on what they are for. So anything that is showing where a black applique piece is gonna be, his nose, his mouth, the pupil of his eyes, and this, this line here, I do with just a nothing fancy, it's just a fine point Sharpie marker. That is permanent, but that's okay because if I'm appliqueing a black piece of fabric over it. I don't need to worry about that line showing through. And when I stitch over this, I'm going to stitch it with black thread. And again, black thread over a black permanent line is totally fine. So you can see here that I used this. You, if you put your piece in a window with the light shining behind it, you can see all of these lines very clearly through to the front, front of the fabric, even if it's a very dark fabric. So I showed his nose and his mouth and this line in the dark Sharpie, I also, in the black Sharpie, I also did the same thing to show where the pupils of his eyes are gonna be on those white eye pieces. All of the other lines I really want to be erasable. Whenever possible, I use just a plain white chalk. And I've actually used that here. I'm not sure that you can see it, um, but I marked here, there's, a, there's ovals for the two eyes and there's marks here where the ears are going to attach. Um, you can see it more clearly on a darker fabric. So this is showing where those inner ears are going to sit and where this is going to tuck behind the head. So when in doubt, um, if, you, if you try it with the white chalk and you can't see it, that's when you pull out the pencil. I just use a regular Ticonderoga pencil, nothing fancy. And um, for that I did, I would have normally done this with white chalk and it would show up fine here, but I wanted to show you the option and I wasn't sure it would show on the video. So I wanted to show you the option. You can just do it with a pencil. So those lines are erasable, but I don't use, if the eraser has color to it, like the Ticonderogas have a black eraser, some pencils have kind of a reddish eraser, I don't use that because the pencil doesn't leave a smudge, but the eraser can. So for that, I have one more very fancy piece of equipment. This is an inexpensive white plastic artist's eraser, and you can erase, it'll erase both the chalk lines and the pencil lines without leaving any kind of a smudge or coloration behind. So transfer all of the dotted lines through to the front side of the fabric, and then I'll show you how we use them when we put the layers together. Okay, now comes the fun part, and that is putting it all together. So you peel off the paper backing, and you lay the piece, and this guy, I think I'm gonna pretty much center him in this. So you wanna make this straight cut edge line up evenly with the raw edge at the bottom of your block. So that is his main body. 
And then let's see, I'm going to do his belly next. Same thing. Peel off that paper backing. And I'm not sure if you can see this, but I've got a chalk line here showing where that belly goes. Next up are his ears. So I'm going to do one ear. And on this one, there's marks on the bottom and on the top that show the placement. So I've got a chalk line here and I've got a chalk line on this. So this one shows where it tucks behind the body and this line shows how deeply it overlaps. So as soon as you cover up that line, you're good. So we're going to do the same thing on the other ear. So this chalk line here shows where it overlaps and the line on the ear shows how deeply you need to overlap it. And then on the inner ear, same thing. And this one I did draw the line in um, pencil so that you could see it more clearly. Sometimes it's hard to tell. I can see things really clearly, but it doesn't always show as clearly in the video. So on this one, same thing. I'm going to overlap it just until that pencil is covered. And same thing on this side. Just tuck that in there until that line is covered up. All right, now I'm going to do his eyes. So he's got these white eyes. There's one. And again, I've got ovals here in chalk showing you where those overlays are. There we go. And now we've got some tiny little pupils. And if you look at this and you're saying, no way do I want to applique something that small, that's totally fine. I've got um, several different options for you. I've got a whole blog post that uh, has links to all the different options that I've done. There are special adhesives uh, that don't need to be sewn. There are, you can use markers, fabric markers. I've tested a whole bunch of them and linked to my favorite ones. I've got same thing with fabric paints. The ones that squeeze out of a tube, they leave a shiny um, kind of raised uh, pupils, which can look really, really nice. Um, there's several different options. And then this guy, so you can see that oval is showing exactly where the mouth goes. And then that's just going to show me the stitching line. And now the last thing I have is some hair. And I did put markings here, but honestly, I wouldn't worry about getting the hair exactly the way I have it. Just tuck your three hair strands up in the top, kind of coming out of a central kind of coming all out of one point, so make them overlap a bit there. I've got one more strand of hair. And there we go. So make sure I didn't move anything else. All right, so double check, make sure you've got all the pieces laid out exactly where you want them. And then I'm going to take this over to the ironing board and I'm going to fuse them in place. Just follow the directions on whatever brand of adhesive you're using. Just make absolutely sure you have everything where you want it because you fuse down, before you fuse down. Because once you fuse it, you can't really move it. So I'm going to fuse it all in place. Then I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine and I'm going to do all of the outline stitching. And then I will come back and kind of talk you through the path that I took for that outline stitching. All right. Here he is all finished and all outlined and I'm going to just kind of walk you through the path that I take to do that outline stitching. I like to really plan it out in advance so that I don't have to stop, tie a knot and restart, uh, restart again or at least so I can keep all of that to a minimum. So on this guy I started down in this corner and I went up over the top of his head once and on the second trip I do three rows of stitching all the way around because I really like that kind of sketchy drawn kind of look. So on the second trip around, I go past the base of his ear and then I catch his ear and I do once, twice, three times along the outside of his ear. And then I just follow along that same path here and then I do the inside of his ear once, twice, three times and continue up here. And I'm going to do the same thing on his hair. So I go past the base of that first hair and I go around it once, twice, three times and keep going 
and then go past the base of the second hair once, twice, three times. Now I'm coming down here, so I scooch down where that last bit of the hair there, come around and do the final hair once, twice, three times, and then I just come down here and back, pick up back up on this line that's going around his head. Come down, do the same this ear the same way I did the other one. I come past the base of it and I do the outer ear first once, twice, three times, and then just double up this little line here and do the inner ear once, twice, three times, and now continue down. That was the second trip around the top of his head, and now I do one more, three up and down. So that's the top of his head done, but I still don't tie a knot yet. Oops, let me scooch this up. And now I travel along this, I just do a little bit of row stitching here. This is gonna be uh, trimmed to fit, and then those are gonna be sewn into a seam allowance. So you're not gonna see any stitching I do below the edge of the fabric here. Carry on until I get to the belly, and then do one, two, three, and finally tie my first knot. So that took care of the body, the belly, the ears, and the hair. So all that's left now is the face. And there's a couple of shortcuts in here, but some of it, there's no help, you just have to tie knots. So in all of the black appliques, the pupils, the nose, and the mouth, I just do one row of stitching. Since it's black stitching on black applique, you can't see it anyway. So the stitching line is really just to secure it, hold it in place so it can be washed. So I start on the this kind of straight edge on the nose here, and I go once around the nose, continue past where I started until I get down to the point. And now I'm gonna do this. So I go down, up, and down again for that's three rows of stitching on that stroke. And now I just go once around the mouth and tie a knot. For the eyes, there's no help for it. You have to go three times around each of the whites and tie a knot on each one, and once around each pupil and tie a knot there. And that is all done. So um, before I move on, I always forget to tell people the fabric and then I always have people emailing me asking me the fabric that I used. So for this one, the background block is from the Warm Neutral Batiks fabric bundle that you can get at Shiny Happy World. And the rest of the fabrics, the dark green and the light green uh, and the yellow for his hair are all from the, um, the Rainbow Brights fabric bundle. And then these little stripey bits are from the Little Stripes fabric bundle. And I also wanna show you a couple of different color options. So this is those colors and now here, we also have a batik in the background, but this one is from the Rainbow Batiks, um, or the Batik Rainbow Fabric Bundle. And then I used two different bundles for his body. I used the Dots Fabric Bundle for this darker orange, and then, and also for the hair, that comes from the Dots Bundle. And then this, the, the lighter orange is from the Gingham Play Fabric Bundle. And the Gingham Play and Dots are coordinated really well to work together as a dark and a light for the two colors. But that's not all. I did one more version I wanted to show you. Usually when I do monsters, I do kind of these bright colors, but I wanted to show you that monsters also work in um, more muted colors. So this one, I really like how this guy turned out. I think in the gray, he looks a lot like a gargoyle. Um, so for this one, the background fabric is from the Box of Crayons bundle. That is all Kona solids. I call it my grown-up rainbow. It's just a more muted uh, rainbow collection. And then all of the fabrics used for his body and his hair come from the Warm Neutral Batiks fabric bundle. I really like using batiks for applique as well as for backgrounds because um, it is dyed all the way through. There's no white backing on batiks. So if it does fray around the edges, it frays in the actual colors and you really, uh, you don't see it. It's not nearly as noticeable as the fraying in other fabrics. So that is the new monster pattern. It is available right now in the Funny Faces Block of the Month Club. And then um, when it's done in for it, with its run in that club, it'll be available at shinyhappyworld.com. I'll be back next month with a new pattern.